was doing the thing where he was like, you know, the Island Boys, I mean, I kind of think that they're like viral geniuses. And I was like, no, they're idiots. They're like the dumbest right. motherfuckers I ever met. And then they saw it, which somehow in my head at that moment, I felt like, oh, I'm a, I'm, I'm talking to another white guy. It's like, there's no hip hop people watching this. I can say whatever I want. I can be totally honest. And then, well, no, no. right. I mean, yeah, that, I, I, that's, that, it's, it's kind of like saying that Ashley Simpson was a, a, a genius for all the publicity she got getting caught lip syncing on Saturday Night Live. Right, yeah. People you know, love like, to, to lay that motive down and be like, oh, look, they were trying to make this happen. People love the idea of conspiracies rather than just acknowledging that like a lot of things are random and if they happen in a specific order then odd results might occur or or things that are beneficial might occur because like i had a dude like basically try to rob me and like stick a gun in my face I and and everybody thought it was fake because I didn't get shot. And then what do I do afterwards? I go and do Logan Paul's podcast, and I'm on the news, and I get all these positive things happen from it. So people thought I had to have made it up because nothing bad happened from it. And it's like, no, I was just taking advantage of the opportunity. Did you see your life flash before your eyes when that happened? Because you looked, and <laughs> you thought it was... It was like three seconds, so I didn't really have time to think of anything besides, like, is this a joke? Like, that's what I thought. Like, is this a Fuck, fucking dude. joke? I thought it might have been one of my friends fucking with me. I heard about that, and then like, and, and I'm like driving to come see him. Like, like I said, I was uh, typed in Adam Twenty Two documentary. <laughs> you know when you scroll through the YouTube feed, like yeah. without actually clicking on the video, it'll like play it in place. Yeah. <clears throat> I one of the one of the videos did, and like the little section of the, the video that played in the feed was you reacting to the guy with the gun on you. Right. And and I thought to myself, man, like. It's so crazy how the instinct kind of takes over to like put your hand out like that. Even when, though this like, is not a good fuck? way to stop a bullet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like well, that's what? how you know it's self defense when they're doing like the first 48 because there's bullets through the hand. Like it's like, fuck. Right, right. It's just like that. Really? Because like, that's your reaction. That makes like, sense, what defensive yeah. wounds are more like from knives and stuff. But yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, it's crazy how your instinct is to put your hand up to stop a bullet. Yeah. It's, uh, it's nuts. That I, definitely I, changed a lot. And, and then, and then, and, and seeing that, I thought, man, like, like, how would I respond? Like, I, I got to believe I would, like, just anybody would re would react the same way. Like, it's just like, you know, the, the natural. It occurs to me that there's no cool, there's, there's no way to look cool when someone pulls a gun on you. <laughs> and imagine if I got my fucking head blown off, what that clip would have been like. It would have been the craziest fucking thing that might have ever happened on the internet of like seeing a fucking influencer get their head shot off on like on live stream like that almost happened. And also the other part of why it was so crazy is because by the time the guy is near me, the guy who was doing security for us has his gun out and basically has it pointed at the guy's head. Now, why he didn't pull the trigger, very controversial, but whatever. He had the gun pointed at him. So I'm kind of like feeling like I'm about to get murdered and then also feeling like I'm about to see this guy get murdered so there was so much going through my head and then right. somehow it ended up with him just getting stomped out and yeah did, the, did that go to court or anything or that just got handled on the side so yeah the cops ended up coming they fucking scrape him up off the ground and take him away and at one point you know I get contacted where they're like we want you to come to court and I'm thinking about it and I'm like I had just been talking to Logan Paul who I don't know why I've said his name three times in the last like five <laughs> minutes, but I was talking to him and he told me about the situation. He's like, my advice, press charges because he had like one dude like pull up to his crib like 10 times or some shit. Like, he, like when I went to Logan Paul's house, he had fucking security outside. Like he's not fucking around at all because he's had crazy fans show up so many times. He told me, he's like, when it comes down to it, press charges because otherwise this motherfucker is going to keep coming back. So I'm like, all right, that makes sense. So then when they tell me to go to court, I'm like, I'm not going to blow this off. I'm actually going to go. I had to wake up at like 530 in the morning so I could be downtown at like 730 or whatever. And then I'm sitting in the courtroom. I see the fucking kid. He's like sitting a few rows in front of me with his dad. His dad is giving me a dirty look as if I did something to him. <laughs> and then whatever like we're sitting there eventually the fucking court appointed lawyer or whoever the fuck it was comes over and just basically tells me like hey this is this is postponed so you don't have to do anything i'm like oh and they're like and, and, we're, and we're not going to call you back like we don't need your help anymore i'm like 
why this is the dumbest thing ever i should have just fucking ignored this like i would have done dude it's crazy did, so did he get in trouble is it i still don't, i don't even know attempted murder is that the charge but it was a fake gun oh shit that was the crazy um, part yeah like when someone someone mentioned that to me and you know, they said that this viral video of someone pulling a gun on Adam 22 and that they described it as it being like super beneficial to you like that being the point at which he really blew up uh, I mean honestly that was a couple years after like the SoundCloud rapper wave which is when I first really blew up is like I interviewed uh, XXX and and yeah, Lil, yeah, I saw that. Lil Peep and all these people who just became fucking gigantic like around that time that was when like things really started going crazy this was a couple of years later and it, again like it was kind of convenient because the business and everything was slowing down a little bit around that time. It wasn't necessarily as huge as it was like maybe a year before. And it did like bring a ton of attention, but also it was like, you get a lot of attention like that month. And then like right. the next month you're like back to normal, like that kind of shit. Right. When you go super viral for something, how many of those people are going to actually be like tuned in to watch your shit every week? Like it, it, mm -hmm. best case scenario, you have that kind of thing happen to you and you can maintain and like capture right. a bunch of that a audience. But that's why when people were like thinking it was fake, I'm like, you really think that I would fake that and risk my reputation of being and be known as a liar forever for what? Right. For like maybe five or 10 grand extra on YouTube ads that <laughs> month. Like that right. doesn't make any fucking sense. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, it's uh, I, I've always felt super strongly about not faking shit. And dude, yeah. just read like that's from what I saw, just that, that, like you said, three seconds. And I saw it like I was just repeating that three seconds. That read very real, dude. Yeah, it you're not real. you're not faking it like that, you know. I mean, why would somebody I even respect the shit out of it that you've got that footage of like, yeah, this is how that, that, that it's so real. I almost finished because like okay that what we were doing is like w when there was the YouTube ad apocalypse in 2018. I don't yep. know if you were hit really, but we. I uh, mean, dude, I was already like <laughs> like not ad friendly. Right, so. but we like I I remember right when that happened, I was making maybe like 50 grand a month off YouTube, just putting out so much shit, and all of a sudden it became five grand a month, and that's when I was like oh fuck like i gotta actually figure out all these other revenue streams that i haven't really like touched on yet like we got to start being more serious about merch and we got to be more serious about like I, I had i had heard about people streaming and i was like well maybe i can just stream and so i start streaming and then people start being like yo here's 10 bucks listen to my song and i'm like all right well you gave me 10 bucks i gotta listen to a song that like spiraled out of control to the point where i was like all right I got to charge more. I started charging like 50 or 75 to a hundred bucks, like to listen to their song. And it just kept coming in. And all of a sudden I was making like almost a hundred grand a month off just listening to people's music on live stream, like a hundred bucks at a time, which that is a thousand songs a month, which sounds fucking kind of depressing to listen to that many fucking random SoundCloud rap songs. But that was what saved me when the apocalypse happened. And that's exactly what I was doing when the guy came in with the gun is I was sitting in the back of the store with a couple of people smoking blunts and watching fucking uh, people's music. I think that clip was awesome, but not as awesome as my new book, A Hard Kick in the Nuts, What I've Learned from a Lifetime of Terrible Decisions, which is out September 27th, and if you pre-order it right now, you can get the autographed copy. So, get on it, man. Pre-order my book. It's not going to waste your time, because I'm proven, dude. New York Times bestseller. My first book's five-star rated on Amazon. And I have no doubt this one will be too. So get the autographed copy right now by pre-ordering it at stevo.com. Yeah, dude.